Welcome to a TUSD Robotics production. In this video, we will begin to build the robot Rise for VexIQ using Onshape. Over the next several weeks, we're going to attempt to build this robot called Rise for VexIQ. This is the robot that was designed to play the game Rise Above. And we're going to do our best to see if we can build this in CAD. This is a set of directions that you can use to build the physical robot when you have a VexIQ kit. But in CAD, I'm going to import all the parts into documents for you to use virtually. On the second page of the directions, you will see some tips for building. What's most important here is that in these directions, you will count the holes in the beams to figure out which holes you will constrain using fastener or revolute mates. Notice that you can count over one, two, three, and then the green circle is highlighted. So you know that's going to be the hole that you are going to constrain. On page three of the directions, you will see there are some tips for building as well. One thing you want to notice is that each of the angle beams has a degree in which it's angled. So in the files that were loaded into Onshape, it would be a 45 degree angle or a 60 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, which looks like an L shape. You will also notice that we measure the axles and the standoffs by the number of holes high they are. So there might be a 3x or a 4x length in axles or standoffs. On the next page of the directions, you will see all the motion parts. And all of these parts have been added into a part folder in your Onshape document. You will see that we have the rubber shaft collar, which we used in the constraints lesson. We also have capped plastic shafts. We have a motor shaft. We have, this is a metal regular pitch shaft, which is 8x long. And then we have three gears. These are spur gears. And if you count the number of ridges, they're called teeth. We have a 60 tooth spur gear, a 36 tooth spur gear, and a 12 tooth spur gear. We are not gonna be using any rubber bands in this project. You will also find that there are two pieces to make the wheels, a rubber tire that's 200 millimeters on the outside and a small wheel hub. On the next page, you will see all the connector parts that were placed in your connector folder. Now, usually we connect the parts with these blue pins. So you have a one by one pin, a one by two pin, or a two by two pin that shows you the length on each side and how many beams it goes through. So this will go through one beam on each side, and this will go through two beams on each side. In Onshape, we're not gonna use these pins. I did put them into your connector part folder if you wanna play with them, but because of their shape in a CAD program, they're very hard to use, and we actually can just constrain the holes of the beams to one another. These are called standoffs, and they hold the beams a certain distance apart. This is a 0.5X or 0.5 length standoff, a 1X and a 2X standoff. This is an end standoff connector. Over here, you will see corner connectors. We have a two by one, so it's two long by one wide corner connector. And it also has two connection points at the bottom, so it's a two X wide. This is the same thing, except for it has a little extra space right there, so it's called an offset. Here we have a one by two, two holes wide. This is a one by two, but it's offset and it's two times wide. So you can see the names here for all the corner connectors and they match the names of the parts in your folders in Onshape. Here you will see the electric parts. We're going to use a robot brain and a smart motor. We're actually not gonna use these smart cables because that's just way too much to put into this CAD file. Here you will see all the structure parts found in your structure folder. We've got one by beams, two by beams, and then a four by plate. So this is a one by four because it's four holes long, one by six because it's six holes long, and now we've got a two by 12 because it's two wide and 12 long. I think you get the idea. Once in a while, there's a center hole and only two of your Onshape files have the center hole included. The rest are just regular beams. There's also two degree angles we will be using, a 45 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. Here's page one of our directions, and this is where we're going to begin. Now remember, we're not gonna use these pins because we don't need them in on shape. So what we're going to insert is a two by 16 beam, a two by eight beam, and then this capped two by or two X length pitch shaft. This is a capped pitch shaft which means that it can spin inside of the hole 
and it doesn't need to be connected on the other side. That cap holds it in place, and we are going to use a Revolute Mate for any type of pitch shaft. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the Onshape work environment, and this is the Rise Robot document that I created and have shared with you. So I'm going to go ahead and create an assembly, but you're not gonna be able to do this until you make a copy. So if you need to make a copy, go up to the three bars right here and copy workspace. Once you do this, you should be able to see this plus sign right here. And when I click that, I'm gonna create an assembly. And this is actually my third assembly. It's called assembly three. You can name it whatever you want. If you want to take a look at what's in your folders, in the structure folder, you can see you've got the 4 by 12 plate, the 2 by 4 beam, everything I just talked about is in this folder. If you get lost in your files, you just need to click home and you can see your main parent folder that has your assemblies, the structure, the connectors, the motion, everything that I just went through. Now, you don't really need to know what's in these folders because when you click insert, they're all going to appear in that menu just lined up really easy for you to use. Okay, I'm gonna close that out for now. So the first thing, if you're following along in the directions, is we need to insert a two by 16 beam. So I'm gonna click on insert, then I'm gonna scroll down and go to two by 16, and then I'm gonna place it in my workspace and ch green check mark to approve. Now, here's a new trick I'm gonna teach you on this file, and that is we wanna be able to always go back to the isometric view using this view cube and have it center itself. But we want this in the isometric view to match the same direction as our PDF directions. So I'm gonna select this and actually move it so that it, using these arrows, so that it is looks pretty much the same exact direction as it does in the directions. Okay, once you have this looking like this and it's in the isometric view, you're gonna fix this so it gets locked. So here we have our part that we just imported. And if you want to rename it, you could right click and rename it. You don't really need to do this. You're gonna to go to properties and I'm just gonna call this instead of the part number, which is also found in the directions, I'm gonna call this the two by 16 beam. And then it's a little bit easier to see what parts you have in your part folder uh, or your parts right here. So um, what I wanna do is I wanna fix this two by 16 beam so it's locked in place in this isometric view and it looks just like this. So I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna click fix. And now it will always come back. Look at the view cube when I turn it. It's always gonna come back when I click isometric to that same position. So it's always important in CAD that you fix one part and you build everything around that part. So that's gonna be this beam right here. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a two by eight beam. So I'm gonna go back to my insert. I'm gonna scroll down to a two by eight right here. And I'm gonna place it in my workspace and green check mark to approve. All right, so now I am going to connect two of the holes together. I'm gonna to constrain them. Now usually we would use pins, but in this we don't need to do that because it's gonna glue itself together just from hole to hole. So, but before I do that, if you look at the directions, you'll notice that there's also a capped pitch shaft that is in the first center hole right here that we need to insert before we attach these two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the capped pitch shaft that is a 2X, and in your directions it has a, a black circle with a two in it. So I'm gonna go down to the pitch shaft, and I'm gonna do the capped pitch shaft 2X, and I'm gonna place that in my workspace and green check mark to select or to approve. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want the center of this cap to be constrained to the top of this hole right here. So I'm gonna use my fast, oh, this is a pitch shaft, so we're gonna use the Revolute Mate so it can spin. So anytime we have a motion like a pitch shaft, we're gonna use the Revolute Mate. So I'm gonna to go to the Revolute Mate, I'm gonna find the center point on the top of the cap, and then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna zoom into this hole and I wanna do the top of the hole. I want that cap to be flush 
or even with the top of this hole. So that's what it should look like. I click on that and check mark. All right. If for some reason yours looks like it's going the wrong way, it's easy to fix. Now on a computer, the second Revolut property window opens up. Just close that out. This is the Revolut Mate we just made. You can right click and edit and you can use these adjustments. So you can flip the primary axis and watch how it goes the other way. I'm going to turn it back because ours is actually right. And you can also rotate and it rotates that axle. But neither one needed to be done here. I just wanted to show you that sometimes we're going to adjust using the flip axis or rotate. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and accept with the green check mark. If I zoom out, you will see that our first part has um, been constrained with a Revolut Mate. All right, so now I want to connect. If I look at my directions, let me zoom in here. Remember, you point your mouse where you want to zoom in. I want to connect, if I look at the directions, the third hole in right here to the other side of this third hole, if I'm reading it correctly. Oops, I'm wrong. I want the second hole to connect to this third hole, but I need to come in on the other side. So let me show you how I'll do this. So I'm going to use the fastener mate. And then I'm going to go and I want the top of the hole. Now notice when I zoom in, there's a top, there's a middle, and there's a bottom of the hole. Now I want to use the top of this hole because it's the same uh, flush side as the cap of this uh, pitch shaft right here. So I'm going to use the top of the hole and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let me zoom into my, uh, move this all over a little bit. Oops, I got lost. So I'm just going to go isometric and it brings it right back. That's why we fix that part because you just hit isometric and it brings it back. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this around because I actually want this back side and I am looking for the third hole in to go match with that hole. And I also want, if I turn this back around, it's going to be the top one, the top hole. So I'm going to do the top hole here. Let me zoom in, make sure I'm getting the top not the bottom. So can I hover there? There we go. The top right there. And I'm going to accept before I scroll out and see what it looks like. So what does it look like? It looks pretty good. The only issue is I can see that these beams are overlapping a little bit. So let's offset this beam and move it away from the other beam. So they're side by side. So this is the fastener mate we just did. I'm going to right click and edit. And I'm going to move and uh, I'm going to offset it. it. Looks like we got that blue Z axis is the direction we want to move it. So let's just do 0.5 inches and see what happens. Well, that first of all went the wrong way. So let's go a negative 0.5 and see what that does. And that's too far. So let me let me try 0.1 because it really didn't need to move that far. That looks about right. Actually, could even be a little bit closer. So what if I do 0.05? Oh, that looks about perfect. Just needed a little bit of a movement. I'm going to hit accept. I'm going to go to isometric to see if it looks like the directions. And so far, we have what is pictured in the step number one in our directions. So we're ready to move on to step number two. In step number two, it looks like we have to connect four different pins, a one by two pin, into holes eight and nine on both sides. Now remember, we're not using pins, and we actually only have to constrain one of the holes to get it to look the right way. So we're actually just using step two to count the number of holes, which looks like it's eight and nine. So let me count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like we're trying to do these two holes right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to do the last two holes that are connected to the beam. These two right here. So one, what the directions are showing is this one, two, three, four. But we're only going to constrain one of those. Okay, so I'm going to move on to step number three. When I move on to step three, it looks like I am not going to be connecting anything there right now, but I am going to add a motor pitch shaft and it's actually going to go, if you count the holes, it's going to go in the fifth hole down this beam. One, two, 
three, four, five. So I want a motor shaft to go into this fifth hole right here. So we will go to insert. We will scroll down and find the motor shaft, which I have found right here, the 4X motor shaft. I'm going to place in my workspace and accept with the green check mark. Okay, so we're going to use a Revolute Mate again because this is a shaft and it's going to spin. And so I am going to click the Revolute Mate. I'm going to, now on this one, I actually don't want the top of this, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit here. I actually want the center of this circle that is around the right there. We're not going to use the top here because this is going to poke out a little bit into the motor. This is going to hold it in place. So I want to use this circle. Let me find it right there. I'm going to click on the center point of that, that area that's going to hold it in place. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I am going to count in five holes. So let's go from the end. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. This one right here. Now I want this cap part or this little ridge to sit right on the top of this fifth hole. So I'm not going to do the, the bottom one. I'm going to do this top hole right here and click and go ahead and accept. Now when I scroll out, actually I'm just going to go back to iso isometric. Let me get rid of this extra property window that always seems to open. And it looks right. If yours doesn't look right, you can always do those adjustments and flip the axes. So let me just remind you how to do that. If I right click and edit, I could try to flip the primary axis, which would look like this, but obviously this is what the directions tell us to do. Um, and rotate isn't going to help us here. So you may need to flip if it doesn't look the way mine does. Okay, so so far we're looking pretty good. We've got two axles going through or two pitch shafts going through. And now we are going to add another pitch shaft into this hole right here. This time I'm going to insert the pitch plastic capped 3X. It's a little bit longer than the first one we used. And the reason is, is because it needs to go through two beams. The first one only went through one beam. Now this one's got to go through two and it needs to be about the same length once it pokes out. So we're going to do this similar to our first one. I'm going to use the Revolute Mate. I'm going to go to the top of the cap and find the center point. We count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to zoom in on that eighth hole and it looks like that is the top of the hole right there. I'm going to click and if, again, if it's, yours is going the wrong way, you can flip your primary axis. Or if it's going the right way and it looks good, just hit the green check mark to accept. All right, I'm going to close out this extra property window that keeps opening up. Let me go back to the isometric view and check out our project. It looks very much like the directions. All right, we're doing great. We're going to add one more part for this lesson, and that's going to be the end of lesson one. So we're going to finish off with step four, and that is we are going to add a corner connector. So if I go to my insert and I scroll down to the corner connectors, you can kind of see a preview of which ones you want. And this one has five holes. So we're going to do the corner connector two wide, two by two. Click on that to insert into your workspace and green check mark to accept. Okay, so these two pins are going to need to go into, if I move this a little bit, are going to, if I look at the directions, they're going to go into these two holes right here. This, whoops, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, this second to the end. So it's the number two hole right here and right here. But honestly, if we get it right, we only have to do one of the holes. So I'm going to go back to the isometric view. And this time I'm going to use a fastener mate. And I'm going to go to fastener mate. I'm going to zoom in. I I'm actually going to use not the top of this pin, but I want to use the bottom of it because this is what I want flush against the beam. So I'm going to click on that. And now if I come over here, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to choose this hole and I'm going to do the top one, not the middle or the bottom. I'm going to choose the top one because we use that ridge that we want to be flush with this top. I click connect and accept. Let's see what happened. It looks like it didn't go right. I'm not sure why. Let's go ahead and delete that. Whenever you make a mistake, just delete it. No big deal. 
Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to do the fastener mate. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to try and do this circle right here at the base of the peg. See if I can get it. I don't want that whole area highlighted. I just want this right. Let's see. Remember, you got to hover over to find it. There we go. That's the pin right there. I'm going to do the bottom of that peg right there. Click on that one, come out, zoom back in, and I'm going to try this hole right here. I'm going to try the top, and it looks like it's going the wrong way. So let me try and adjust it. First, I can rotate. That looks pretty good, but it's going the wrong way. So I'm going to flip the axis, and that looks right. Let me accept. So I actually had to flip and change the axis to get this one to work right. All right, this is quite enough for our first lesson. So if you got this in uh, the, your time today, you are going extremely fast. If you think you've got this, you've got the directions and all the parts, you can keep going. But this is a huge accomplishment if you got this far. And in lesson two, we will begin with step number five. All right, thanks for watching.